So you've got a shiny new solar system on your roof. What happens now? Let me tell you exactly how to keep it smashing your power bills for decades to come. These tips will help you squeeze every last dollar of value from your investment over the years ahead. Let's dive in. Your installer has packed up and driven off into the sunset. Here's what you should check right now to ensure a quality install. Trust me, spending 10 minutes doing this could save you years of headaches. First up, let's check what's on your wall. Your inverter, is it sitting in full sun? A bit of morning sun isn't the end of the world, but if it's copping harsh afternoon rays, you need to get your installer back to stick a shade over it. Simple as that. For your wall mounted isolators, take a look at where the conduit goes in. If it's coming in from the top, that's a big red flag. Why? Because water follows gravity and you don't want rain trickling down those cables into your electrics. Get your installer back to put the conduit in from the bottom. bottom. <laughs> Hilarious. Now, check out the cable around your inverter. Is it neat and tidy or is it hanging loose? Messy cables, they look shit and they're just waiting to be snagged. Now, from ground level, let's look up at your roof. See any exposed flexible conduit between the panels? Ideally, there's no exposed conduit whatsoever, but where it's necessary, it should be UV protected rigid conduit. Get them back to fix this. Flexible conduit exposed to the elements will degrade over time. Are your panels sitting straight and level? Crooked panels look crap and usually means a rush job. If your panel's clamps are too close to the panel center, it makes them look like a diving board and are likely out of spec and mean the panel is more likely to flex and crack. What about shading? Trees, antennas, chimneys, anything casting shadows on those panels? Your installer should have discussed this with you and made you aware of the expected lost output. Last thing, paperwork. Yep, I know it's boring, but trust me, in five years when something goes wrong, you'll be real happy to have all that warranty information and installer details handy. Make sure they've given you everything. I've got a link in the description to what they need to provide. And if they haven't, chase them up for that paperwork. Now, here's the weird part nobody tells you about getting solar. After your installer shows you everything's working perfectly, they have to turn it all off. They cut the power. What do you mean they cut the power? How could they cut the power, man? I know what you're thinking. What the hell? Here's the deal. Your existing meter probably can't handle solar power flowing both ways. It needs upgrading or reprogramming first. And this is where things can get really frustrating for the owner. See, this isn't your installer's job. It's up to your electricity company, or if you're in Victoria, your network provider. And let's just say they don't exactly move at light speed. We're talking weeks. I know it's annoying. Your installer thinks it's annoying too. They want you saving money right away, but their hands are tied on this one. As for costs, it's a bit of a lucky dip. Some power companies will sort you out for free. Others might charge you a small fee, and some will try to sting you for the full amount, 300 bucks or more. Now. Let me tell you the secret to maximizing your savings with solar. It's all about when you use your power. Here's the deal. Every kilowatt hour of solar you use in your house is worth up to 10 times more than what you get paid for sending it back into the grid. 10 times. So what does that mean? Don't rely on your exported power to save you the big dollars. You save money by not using the grid during the day. So run your power hungry appliances while the sun's out. Think about it. Got a washing machine or dishwasher? run them on a timer. Running the aircon at night? Try pre-cooling the house during the day instead. And for God's sake, if you're running your pool pump or hot water at night, you're throwing money away. Switch them to daytime only. It's not rocket science, it's just a few simple tweaks to when you use power, which can turn those terrifying power bills into pocket change. Let me share something that happens all the time. I get a panicked email from someone saying, Finn, what the hell? I just got my first bill with solar and it's barely changed. Nine times out of 10, these folks didn't follow my advice about getting proper solar monitoring, which would let me instantly diagnose the problem, but we'll do it the hard way. First up, has your solar been running for a full bill cycle? Double check this on your inverter app. You'd be amazed at how many people expect savings before their system is even switched on. If it has been running, let's play detective with your bill. You're looking for two things. Solar credits, usually marked with a CR. That's the money you're getting for sending the power back into the grid and lower overall usage because you're using your own solar power instead of buying it from the grid during the day. Can't see any solar credits at all on your bill? Get on the phone with your power company right now. I'm not kidding. I know someone whose parents had solar for years 
before realising their electricity company weren't paying them a feed-in tariff. If you can see credits on your bill, but your usage hasn't dropped much, the likely culprits are you're using most of your power at night, or it's winter and your panels just aren't pumping out as much juice. Or you've gotten complacent with your energy use thinking, well, I've got solar, I can crank everything 24 seven. If your first post solar bill has you worried, just call your installer. A good installer will be happy to sit down with you and help you understand exactly what your solar is doing to your bills. Here's another email I get all the time. Finn, my 6.6 .6 kilowatt system is dodgy. The inverter only hits 4.8 kilowatts. What's going on? Let me explain something that'll save you a lot of stress. What really matters is how much energy your system produces over time. That's measured in kilowatt hours, not the peak power it hits for a few seconds. That's measured in kilowatts. Want to know if your system's actually performing? Simply jump on my solar calculator, punch in your postcode, your system size, and which way your panels face, and it'll spit out what your system should be generating each month. Compare these numbers with what your system is actually doing, and I bet you'll find everything sweet. Seriously, 99% of the time when people do this and check, their system is performing exactly as it should. But if your numbers are more than 10% off what they should be, and you don't have obvious issues like shade, then yep, give your installer a ring. Otherwise, stop stressing and enjoy those solar savings. Now, when it comes to keeping your panels clean, I'll save you some time, some money, and maybe your life. In most cases, you don't need to clean your solar panels. If your panels are tilted more than 10 degrees, which they should be, Mother Nature's got your back. Every time it rains, those panels get a free wash. It's as simple as that. But Finn, shouldn't I clean them anyway? Even if you go full window washer on your panels, you're probably only gonna squeeze about 2% more power out. Not worth the hassle or the risk of falling off your roof. If you mounted your panels flat, you'll need to get them cleaned about four times a year or accept a 15 to 20% reduced output due to dirt buildup on those flat panels. Most window cleaners will do solar panels too, so give them a call and get a quote. The only real exception is if you live somewhere that's constantly dusty or dirty, like right next to a quarry or in the middle of the outback. If that's you and the rain is not keeping up with the grime, then yep, you might need a professional clean every now and again, or at least a good hose. Just remember, if you do need cleaning and you're not experienced at heights, get a pro to do it. They've got the right gear and insurance, and you can keep all your bones intact. Let's talk maintenance. Not exactly the most exciting topic, but you'll want to know this stuff. Given enough time, the weather will find every weakness in a substandard solar install. Those cables draped across the roof, those badly sealed connections, it all adds up. But even if you've got the best install money can buy, you've still got expensive electrical equipment sitting out in the weather 24 seven. That's why you need to get a proper inspection from an accredited installer. My recommendation, every five years. Best bet? get your original installer back. They know the system, they installed it, they're your best choice. If they've gone bust, it happens. Jump on solar quotes and we'll hook you up with someone trustworthy. By the way, if you're in SA Victoria or the ACT, you don't really have a choice. Power companies mandate that you test your system every five years anyway. You might as well get the full inspection done while the installer's on your roof. A proper check every five years keeps everything running sweet and stops small problems from turning into expensive ones. So you've got solar, what's next if you really wanna crush your bills? Make your house less leaky. Fix gaps, glazing and insulation and it will make your home comfy to live in year round and reduce your aircon use. What about batteries? From a pure economics perspective, even with the battery rebate, payback can vary from six years to over 20. So ask your installer to do the maths or use my battery calculator before buying. For hot water, which is the largest energy user for most homes, you should seriously consider replacing your system with a heat pump. They're super efficient and they are the cheapest way to heat your water. The energy saved every year with a heat pump can power the typical EV. And speaking of electric cars, if you think you'll get one in the future, check your solar system's big enough to handle charging an electric car and running your house. That's why I upgraded from six kilowatts of solar to 20 kilowatts. Look, there's heaps more we could talk about, but those are the big ones. If you've watched till now and you still haven't got solar, seriously? Jump on solarquotes.com.au and let's sort you out with some quality installers who know their stuff.